Hello, and thank you for joining me today. If this is your first time visiting, I certainly appreciate you giving me an opportunity. Please be sure to check out some of my other videos and consider a subscription to the channel. Now, for those that are returning, as always, thank you for your continued support. That is always appreciated, and please be sure to leave a like for the video. Today we're in my 2021 Model 3 Tesla and I want to talk about the full self-driving package that is available for this car. Now when you first buy these cars, they offer the full self-driving package as an upgrade and it's $10,000. They've recently went to a subscription based as well where for $200 a month you can have that feature active in your car. And what I'm going to show you today is whether or not I believe that that's actually any value in purchasing the full self-driving package. And the first thing about the package I would like to mention is that the actual name of it is a misnomer. This car is nowhere close to fully self-driving it's, itself. Uh, the Tesla's term for the technology of the car's ability to, to do things by itself is called self-driving. Uh, when you first buy the car, if you don't opt for the package, there's basic things that the car can do. You pay for the package and you actually get access to the full functionality, but it's not fully self-driving. So that's kind of a play on words that Tesla and Elon is using there. What it also is not is if you've been watching these videos on YouTube where the car is actually in city traffic, uh, it's navigating, it's making turns by itself, it's starting, it's stopping, it's doing all those things, those people are beta testers. They're either employees for Tesla or they're uh, social media influence, like YouTubers, Instagram people and things like that, that they've been given the, the early access to that to do the beta test for it. The full self-driving package does not come anywhere close to what those beta testers are showing you on those YouTube videos. Now, with all that being said, Elon, if you are listening, if you would like to include me in the uh, early access group, I'd be glad to debate and test your product for you. So now I'm going to talk about what the basic package will do, and it comes. It is, there's basically two parts of it. One of it is auto steer, and the other would be auto speed or auto cruise, whatever you want to call it. The auto steer, the car will maintain its lane on the city streets and on the interstate, and that's pretty much it. I have a most. I know a lot of new uh, the modern cars that, that are coming out now. They have that feature already. I have a, a 2022 Honda Civic that does auto uh, maintains its lane just fine. Just, just as well as this car does. does. Tesla does not do anything better or different than that. The auto cruise or auto speed feature is, again, it's just basically your cruise control. You set the car for whatever speed you want it to maintain. If it gets behind slower traffic, it slows down with it, and once that traffic speeds back up to at least your uh, set speed, the car will speed back up behind them. Uh, the auto speed will not stop and go in traffic unless it's following another car. It will not read your traffic signals like stop signs and stop lights, but it will slow for the car in front of you if it's stopping for a light or a stop sign, and then after the, the light has changed or it's clear to move on, the car will follow it from a stop position. And that is pretty much it for the basic part. Now the full self-driving package, I went ahead and purchased that so that way I can show you the features and you can make up your own mind whether or not you think that there's value there that you would like to spend the money on these features or not. Uh, the first part of the full self-driving package that we'll go over is the auto speed or auto cruise, whatever you want to call it. Now when it's set, it behaves just as it did before. It, it will follow traffic and slow down with traffic. But if there's no traffic in front of you, it will also read a stop, a stop light or a stop sign. Once it sees that it's approaching an intersection, you get a prompt on the screen, screen telling you that it's going to stop in the next 600 feet or whatever it is for the uh, traffic control. If the control is already green, you have to either either give the car input by clicking the stalk halfway down or you need to hit the accelerator pedal and it will proceed through the intersection. If the light is red, you just let the car stop on its own. After the car is stopped at the stoplight, once the light turns green, then the car, well, you again have to prompt it with either the accelerator pedal or give the stalk half a click and the car will leave from a stop position at that point. Now when the car is approaching a pedestrian crossing or a school zone, whether it's active or not, the car begins to slow down. If uh, that's a problem for you, all you have to do is hit the accelerator and you can gas it back up to speed. It will not come to a stop, but it does slow down for crosswalks. Now let's talk about what the auto steer feature will do. It is, does exactly what the basic version of it does with the exception that you can now change lanes automatically. All you have to do is turn your turn signal on, the car checks the surroundings, and if it's safe to do so, it will change the lane for you. And that is pretty much it.
And you should also keep in mind with the full self-driving uh, auto steer is it will not make right and left turns for you on city streets. If you are in a turn lane and the, the light changes and you prompt the car to go, it's not going to make the turn for you. You have to actually grab the steering wheel and do the turn. It will just keep driving straight ahead with the current full self-driving package. Okay, now let's talk about the Navigate on Autopilot that comes with the full self-driving package. All this basically is is that when you put a destination into your navigation uh, feature, if available, the Navigate on Autopilot button will pop up. Uh, you click that and when it can, the car will do the navigation on Autopilot. It's my experience in my area that this only works on interstates. Now there may be some areas where Tesla has what's called a geofence. In other words, they have come in and they've mapped the crap out of that area. The car knows exactly where it's at is in relation to that map that's downloaded in it. And it may work on city streets in that respect. So for me, the only time that the car will actually navigate on autopilot is if I have a interstate included in my route. And even then, it's only when I'm on the interstate. It will not navigate itself to the interstate and then navigate itself back off. So while you're on the interstate, what the Navigate on Autopilot will do, it will suggest lane changes. If you have construction coming up on your right, it, it may suggest that you move over into another lane. And once that prompt comes up where it's suggesting a lane change, if you want to take it, you just click your steering wheel stalk and it'll do that. If you come up behind traffic that's going slower than what your cruise control is set on, it will also su suggest a lane change. Once the suggestion comes up, you click the turn signal stalk, the car will make the lane change when it's safe to do so. Now another thing that the car will do while it's navigating on autopilot on the interstate is when it comes to the exit that it's supposed to take, it will actually turn this, the blinker on by itself and it will take the exit. But as soon as you come off of the interstate, the navigate on autopilot feature turns itself off and it's just basically back to the uh, self-driving that the car can already do. It will do an exchange from one interstate to another with, without any input from you, except for the, if it's a pretty good size, a, a pretty good curve on the ramp or something like that, the car is going to want to take it way too fast. I've I've had my uh, pucker factor once or twice trying that out, and I at this point just don't trust it to do that. And so that about sums up what the Navigate on Autopilot is capable capable of at this point in time. And finally, the last two things that come with the full self driving package are the summon feature and the auto park feature. I'm not going to even bother to try to demonstrate either one of these for you because they just really do not work at this time. You see videos of before of the cars being summoned when they first came out. Yeah, that's kind of cool and all, but in my experience, it's not very practical and it does not work very well. Uh, you can use the summon feature to put your car into a garage or, or back it out of the garage as long as it's a large enough uh, garage that's not going to confuse the sensors of the car. The size of my garage door is pretty tight. It's just big enough to get the car in and out. And when I try to do it with the summon feature, the car moves forward a little bit and it stops because the sensors are telling it that it's too close to things. Even when it can actually make it, it won't do it. As for the auto park feature, Feature. If you're in a parking lot uh, and it sees an open parking space, it's supposed to show a gray P on the screen beside the car. Uh, you can select that and then the car should auto park itself. Uh, again, for me, as many times as I've been in the parking lot with it, I've only seen that P come up once or twice. So that the technology really isn't there yet for, the, for where the full self-driving is at at this point. So there you have it. That's been my experience with Tesla's full self-driving package. It's really up to you whether you think the value is there that you want to pay the $10,000 lump sum or if you want to pay the $200 a month for the subscription. Again, that's your decision to make. What I think about it is currently no. There, there is not near enough value in what it will do at this point in time. At some point, yes, that may be very cool. Uh, I've seen the beta testing videos and what they've got in store, but I, I got a feeling that's still going to be a long way off before they're going to unleash that on the general public. So don't look for that anytime soon. Now, with all that being said, I certainly appreciate each and every one of you for joining me today, and I hope you'll check back next week for next week's video, and I'll see you then. Now, if you're uh, with the none of the self-driving turned on and you say you come up to a stoplight one thing that the car does do that's pretty neat for you is that when the light turns green it gives you an audible ding so that way if you're not looking at the light if you're looking down at the cabin then the car is going to let you know when the light turns green so you don't hold it up there you go